Hi everybody, I hope you're well. Uh, today we'll read from a book titled The Speculative City, Art, uh, Real Estate and the Making of Global Los Angeles by Susanna Phillips Newbury, published by University of Minnesota Press. The photograph is pure speculation. In the foreground, two wood frame houses, one small, the salt box, the other a derelict mansion, the castle, sit perched on a small rise penned off from the dirt and debris that surrounded them by a chain-link fence. The image is crisp and well-composed. A white 1960s car aligns with the rich line that lower left, chain-link leading across the construction site toward a half-hidden oak tree and telephone pole on the right, signs of life in an otherwise apocalyptic space. The houses sit starkly outlined against a gradient background, one that fades from the white to a rich grey as the eyes move up, uh, as if signalling the edge of the image at the edge of its own world. They had been left for dead. The castle, 1968, looks south and west across the land, the levelled former nexus of 19th century Los Angeles. The scene captured by Julius Schulman has indeed been evacuated, cleared of people. The working class black, brown, indigenous and Anglo community that made up its most recent population. Cleared of buildings for urban renewal except for the designated historical cultural monument salt box and castle buildings cleared even of pavement. The buildings were soon to be raised on track beds and packed two miles north off the bank of a dry river planned as a heritage square, a displaced vestige of Victorian LA. Within a year, they too would vanish during restoration, burned down in a fire set by young people in search of a place to party as part of a history of forgetting. Despite its mournful capture of endings, the photograph also sees the future. The viewer looks both at and through the scene. Behind the wood frame buildings, a behemoth rises. A gridded, rectangular, modern structure, its beams and floor lines scaffolding turned design flat and inexpressive against the Queen Anne vernacular. At the top, on a black background, the words Union Bank ran centered across its surface, its text naming the image as if announcing its future. Just above, light clouds reappear, anchoring the scene in the geography of the everyday, caught in a moment of passing. Completed the same year by Albert C. Martin and Associates, local adherents to international style modernism, it was the first skyscraper to be built in downtown Los Angeles. It was also an aspirational symbol of things to come, the implementation of an efficient, gleaming new city on a hill. Backed by private capital, secured by corporate multinationals and slick cultural institutions, the 1969 vision of LA's urban future sought to rewrite the city's identity, speculatively, as one of streamlined global power. Schulman's picture speculates on the future while remediating the past. Today, the site is indeed full of office towers, with no trace left of the 19th century neighborhood it replaced. The Los Angeles headquarters of Wells Fargo Bank sits where the castle did before. Financial services firm Charles Schaub and construction and design consultants AICOM joining the mix of Fortune 500 companies nearby, all with Grand Avenue their frontage. And Grand Avenue is, as the Los Angeles Times opened in 2019, the centerpiece of Los Angeles' self-renovation into one of the world's great capitals, a destination for millions of visitors. As Eli Broad, philanthropist and art collector, put it, establishing corporate and cultural institutions along the street formed part of an effort to make Bunker Hill the beginnings of a true city center. Farther up the block lie two major art museums, the Museum of Contemporary Art and Broad Art Museum, a prominent philharmonic with its own experimental gallery space embedded inside, Disney Concert Hall and Red Cat, a prestigious music academy, 
a complex of concert halls comprising the city's own Lincoln Center, and a multi-block park cascading down the hillside and ending at the 1930s City Hall. Grand Avenue is a space of institutions and the illustrious designed architecture that houses them, and soon it will be a space of experience anchored by a one billion mixed-use development themed around art and culture and serviced by the same. The Grand Avenue project, the city's hometown paper rights, will exist as total experiential immersion, a street as a destination to explore urban life in miniature, backed and remediated by art. The speculative city, art, real estate and the making of global Los Angeles tells the story of art's role in that process throughout the second half of the 20th century in downtown Los Angeles and throughout the Southland. As the city struggled to articulate a coherent civic identity, politicians, legislators and private patrons increasingly turned to art to justify their efforts at redevelopment. Pairing specific works of art with specific innovations in real estate development, the speculative city recounts how the ordinary, everyday landscape of a changing built environment became subject and concept for the region's artists. It also, in turn, tells the story of those artists' increasingly prominent role in Los Angeles' evolving 20th century definition as a global city of culture and commerce. And it tells the story of how, more than a decade ago, art and real estate converged in a crisis that upended global finance and how we see the spatial politics of cultural economies. It does so by highlighting one manifestation of this new urban imagery, the historical close relationship between art and real estate development that backs many contemporary understandings of the concept of speculation. In fact, the book designates speculation itself as an operative analytic framework with which to understand these developments within a neoliberal global economy, where private profit marks achievement. In so doing, it proposes a new understanding of contemporary arts cultural agency as index of the intense social crisis such developments in capitalism have ushered into a seemingly permanent state of being. Using the close analysis of individual artworks and archival documentation of strategic innovations in real estate, the speculative city explores how artists, architects, builders and philanthropists constructed, funded and remediated the post-war city as a complex feedback loop between aesthetics, economics and society. As for the book at your local bookstore, thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.